it really does need that last modification of stripping out the back system. Hi and welcome to Beck's Bug Out Survivor. This is the tailoring series and I do have a couple more projects with this particular one which is the DPM. The one here is the MTP and I'm going to let JJ's do this one for me because it can get expensive letting somebody else do all the modifications for you. A way you can save money is doing it yourself and there is a whole playlist on this channel of me tailoring up this older pack here and you can do it very cheap. This by the time it's all finished would cost me about 400 UK pounds. This uh, I can pick up a Bergen for about 20-30 quid and some of the pouches 10 or each and then a, a little bit of know-how with a sewing all. The next modification to this is going to be from the back. For now I'll put on this pad a couple of straps to hold it in place and I can use an air foam pad on there as well which is fantastic gives a lot of comfort but what I could do is take off this padded little support here which is just a bit of foam let's take that off and have a look at this here all the weight comes from these ribs one here one here one here five in total they're rigid stick in your back and can be unnecessarily heavy now we know why they're so rigid it's because the lads in the forces are going to throw these out of troop transporters even out of um, c-47 choppers helicopters and they just go in a big bergen dump they just really get battered but i can afford to take the back system out of this and re replace it entirely with something like this just a little foam pad for comfort rather than uh, its agility if you want to keep your agility you could be looking at something like this which JJ's have done for me and they've put a mesh here just for my lower lumbar and it's added a little more comfort and of course the wider shoulder straps here as well so this one I'm going to keep intact but just let JJ's do the work for me because they can do it on the machine and all my work is hand sewing so I have been racking my brains exactly how I'm going to strip out all the back ribs from that this pack here and I think I found a way to do it so I've just quickly taken out some of the components which are my waterproofs a sleeping bag a wooby the old style softies the basher with pegs some food and water the cotton smock and fleece smock liner all in all there's not a lot there but there's a lot of weight so I've been looking at the back of this Bergen wondering how ever am I gonna do this I knew I had to cut into it somewhere and yet I didn't want to stitch it all back up and then leave scarring and that was a challenge so I had to really think it all through and I've been giving this some thought for the past few months it, 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 this isn't something I'm just diving straight into but on the inside is a separate sleeve where I can remove the internal uh, alloy frame which I think is three prong and then I should be able to cut all the individual stitching between ribs I can make an incision on the inside to reach in to remove the ribs replace with some foam which is going to be a lot lighter and then I only have to sew up the inside so there won't be any scarring on the outside where you can see exactly what it is I've done so hopefully that's going to be the fix now if you want to know how much 
this back piece weighs, here's what to do. Pop your arm inside your Bergen and let it ride on your arm that is extended outwards like that with the back cushion or the back piece or the back system underneath here and feel the weight of it on your arm and leave it there till it starts aching. You can do this now. Go get your Bergen, empty it out, put it on your arm, give it 20-30 seconds, your arm starts to ache. Once that happens, just lift the bottom here where the back support is, the back system, and then see how much weight is actually on your arm. It's hardly anything. All the weight of the Bergen is in this top lid, which I'll have to also swap out for a jack lid, but in a separate video. And the back support here, the system, all the weight are in these ribs. So that's the frame. Simple little T-bar. I'm going to try and replace that very dense heavy foam with something a lot lighter. I will lose its rigidity so if you're carrying equipment which is something like hot tent stoves, basher poles, things like that, don't do this modification. This is a modification if you're only carrying fabrics where you want to adapt your former Bergen for wild camping and things like that, especially wild camping where you're only carrying a sleeping bag, a bivvy, a basher, and then either on webbing or side pouches, you've got a cook kit, some food, and however you want to carry your water, which reminds me I've got to put two utilities on the kidney pads there to carry my water. I did that modification already if you want to see it putting the utilities on the hip belt for water bottles. I think it was the short back, I'm not too sure, and I love the short back. This is a long back in MTP, and that one has been professionally tailored by JJ's of Brecon here in Wales in the UK. And I wouldn't mind doing my own version, but a short back. I prefer short backs, although I do have a long back. My back is 19 and a half inches, and yet I, I'm not that tall. Just a heads up here, I haven't done this modification before. It'd be futile me actually showing you a video of something that didn't work, and the fact you're seeing it means it must work. There's a very important element to this that I have forgot. A cup of coffee. It's going to take a long time. I'm having a brew. 
good couple of hours unpicking all the stitches across each of the ribs apart from where the actual shoulder harness is so I don't want to come and cut above here but I have cut underneath all the stitches there need it oh wow let's get a knife or scissors or a blade to cut in but I'm just going to show you where I'm going to make that incision but on the inside so between the nameplate and this panel here now I've already unpicked all the stitching but that is where I'm going to make the incision but not on the outside where the shoulder harness is I need to lie this down come to the inside I need to cut here where my finger is cut into there and I'm going to use a little straight edge razor blade just make sure again that I'm cutting into the right portion which is there lift up this flap where you insert the frame rods one two and three we're not cutting into that instead we're cutting into this section here and again I wanted to make sure I'm cutting the right place and I can see the existing stitch line remember where I unpicked all them stitches so I, I've got a line to follow I'm going to cut into it now with this razor you can use scissors or you can use a disposable razor but if you have a straight edge like that that'll work and I'm going to cut it from one side of the Bergen one edge to the other not all the way to the edge because I do want to stitch that back up and I'll be using something like a blanket stitch to put the repair back in and the repair the stitching will be done on the inside and not the outside so to the eye it won't be seen any of this All I'm going to do is feel for the actual rib and just slowly cut into the actual fabric. Now I know you're not going to see a hell of a lot here but believe me I'm not seeing a lot myself and start making a slicing motion and bring that all the way across keeping it as straight as I possibly can I don't want it coming through to the other side I can get my hand inside now and I'm actually feeling for the ribs and I've got my hand right down to the bottom I've got access to all the ribs and I'll show you what they are let's pull one out there's just one of the ribs that is some high density foam and five of them are going to add up to a lot of weight the frame will also add and so will the sleeve that holds the frame that's got to go that's got to go as well so I'm going to pull out all these little sections of foam here I mean just look how thick that is you can imagine five of them in a stack well you don't have to imagine I'll pull them all out now imagine no more there's a second there's the third that looks even thicker wow it is adding up and if I reach upwards now there should be another there come on out you come there 
So we've got four of the five ribs. Put my hand back in, get that very bottom one. So I have one, two, three, four, five ribs. There's a lot here and it is a bit weighty. I can also preclude this, the weight of that, which is the frame. And then there's the actual fabric that holds the frame in place as well. So I'm just going to get some scissors and take that out as well. I've already taken the top lid off, but that's going to be a different episode because we'll put a jack lid on that if you want to go down the road of having all the modifications yet, making it lighter. That's a challenge. And this section here with the stud on and the Velcro is where you put the actual frame into these sleeves here. Three sleeves, one, two and three. All this can come out because that will add to the weight. And believe me, 1000 Kajura per meter, per square meter, weighs. It weighs a lot. And I've just given you a sneak insight that I've already taken the top lid off. And I happened to weigh it. So without cheating and weighing your own top lid off your Bergen, put in the comments what you think just the top lid of the Bergen weighs. Only the top lid. Now the only thing that I have in my top lid is my basher. My basher weighs 600 grams. So guess how much the top lid weighs to put the 600 gram basher into. You can put that in the comments now. And then by next month, when we move over to making the jack lid, you might see some logic of what I'm doing. Right, time to take this off. So this is the next bit I'm removing. This is the section that the tri-bar alloy frame sits in. And it's quite deep. It goes the full length and full width of the pack. I've made a start cutting as close to the actual seam here as I can. Now this you don't want to unpick because this section here is sewn into the side seam. So this is a cutting job. I've got scissors and I'm cutting away the section with the Velcro and the three pop studs and cut into it. And the deeper I cut into this pack, the less I'll be able to see. So again, a job I just want to take my time with. Incredibly difficult. And it just suddenly dawned on me that I could take my pack and turn the whole thing inside out to cut that panel off. But it is too late. I already had my fingers and hands in, head torch on, couldn't see what I was doing. It, it was a nightmare. So I'm going to tell you up front, you can turn your pack inside out like I did and have full access to your back panel. Now I'm going to turn it the right way around. Well, that little panel is out and the bar frame is out and what originally would have happened is your bar frame sits into sleeves which I'm just going to put in for you now I'm sure you already know three sleeves three bars push here so the bars go into the sleeve and push all the way down the bottom of the pack like that now this section here with the frame never actually made direct contact with the foam that I've already pulled out and then this section here another section of Kajura because it's not connected directly to the foam 
it was always falling away like that I'll get a bit of foam and I'll show you how it was bear with me so the foam was in a sleeve of 1000 denia Kajura if you remember like that then another section where the frame was here so you see it was never the frame in contact directly with the foam so it enabled this to fall forward and it falling forward or in from my perspective falling back the frame was always coming off your back like that and you needed to pull what is laughably a load lifter to get it tight onto your shoulders so it's not a load lifter extend my arm I can feel weight so I need to know where the weight is coming from let's give it a few seconds till my arm starts to ache a little not a lot and then just lift the, where the back frame was there's no weight at all there like there was in the beginning all the weight was on the back support them rubber spars and ribs let's turn it back over now so the existing part that was on my back is now on my upper arm with all those pouches that are sewn on below now let's lift yeah now I've got a feel of where the weight is I'm going to try and put a bit of foam in that and then put it on my back I might not even need the foam all the kit that you saw laid out the sleeping bag the bivvy basher everything including softies it's in here I've left nothing out I have left out the back frame I have left out the spars and the ribs and all the stuff that made the back heavy so this is now a frameless Bergen so you only want to put fabric in here I've already put that little foam pad inside so it does give a little bit of comfort I might not even need it but I'm gonna leave it in there and sew up that wound that is on the inside so I'm gonna strip out everything that's in this pack sew that up we're ready to go but Bergen worked out 100 times better than I thought it would be so no longer is it um, a, a load carry as in uh, you're going to carry a lot of rigid equipment so it's more like a frameless ruck now I, I do have frameless rucks um, now a lot of people don't understand the logic of frameless rucks but then again I've got external frame vintage rucks that I love and there's people who don't understand the logic of them if you've ever had a frameless ruck or an external frame vintage ruck you'll know you'll just know so I know that I'm never going to be able to get heavy rigid equipment in here ever again but I could get a tent in there I could get a sleeping bag in there I could get a basher in there my rain gear in there anything that's fabric just wait there including brew set the things I will no longer be able to get in there ammo boxes like that but why would I want to take an ammo box camping with me anyway unless of course it was for a hot tent and I'd converted um, an ammo box like this into a stove but I've already 
made a lightweight stove I'll just put this back yeah I've already made a lightweight stove so don't really have weight in if you have weight in your pack and I'm gonna sort of guess 23 to 30 kilos you're gonna need your back support okay a tent a sleeping bag a ground pad even the water and your stove and set of rain gear some food does not come to anything like that remember with the frame mine came to 10.6 without the frame or oh, and that was all the equipment in it now then this is what has been removed including the top lid so we're gonna have to make a jack for that next month and that is what has been removed I've just had that on the scale and I've just had that on the scale you will not believe how much weight is in my hand just there I did the right thing taking out the ribs um, the spar bag and the top lid which again is a separate episode but let's just concentrate on the back then that bit I've put that on the scale here and you're not going to believe me so I'm going to have to video it it was something like actually I'm not going to tell you its weight you're going to have to see this with your own eyes I'm going to have to find something to put on this like a stand which is just going to be this tin this tin is 595 grams and I can zero it that's zeroed let's see how much it all is together it's zeroed you will not believe what the back system weighs you wouldn't believe it if I told you it's going to be one of them things you're going to have to see for yourself that is right nearly 800 grams 796 grams I wonder if I can put that into old-fashioned money Does that mean anything to anyone? And I'm a child of the 70s, so uh, I know a lot of people who watch this channel in the US will get very upset if I uh, take the mickey out of anything pre-decimalisation. But just to annoy our friends in America, real actual decimalised weight and the old-fashioned pound shillings, pence, of um, yesteryear so that is a whole continent I've just managed to offend in one sentence so that's it in a nutshell I've stripped out a lot of weight there including the top lid even more weight but if you do want to carry things which have a mass like this like the ammo cans stove pipes um, huge poles you know you're moving a lot of metal gear around I wouldn't do this modification if all you're doing is putting soft shell things on the inside like tent sleeping bag bivvy some spare clothes your rain gear little stove camp related items I would certainly get rid of the back support now I already have a JJ's Bergen here which goes the other way I've actually added to the back support and added larger shoulder straps so here I'm actually adding weight in now this one here is more suitable for a bug out bag if I was to use that as a bug out bag this one more suitable for a wild camp but I don't want all the weight of the Bergen and yet I still want to use surplus so there your difference is whether you want to use a wild camping kit or a bug out kit and what you put in it. Now regarding these as a bug out bag I wouldn't have either. I much prefer something else entirely. It's this here. This is the All Arms Bergen. It's nicknamed the Turtleback. 
and it's used by the Royal Engineers and you have to sort of pull back here to get it all in shot. It's a hell of a lot lighter than either of these Bergens, even the stripped out back support is even lighter than that. The back here doesn't have the hard foam, it has soft foam. I've taken the alloy frame out of it. I've added on pouches, a basher pouch, two utilities, just as I would uh, the other Bergen. This one can go on an external alloy frame and it feels absolute nothing to carry. It feels like half the weight. Don't forget, I've still got a slit on the inside of this that needs to be sewn up. And I've put a little very lightweight CTF pad in, which I can glue into place with um, fabric spray. And then just use some blanket stitches. But I mean, it's working as it is, even without the pad, even without sewing it up. And you should be pretty good at sewing up by now. If not, you can use some um, fabric tape on it. And then you don't need to sew it at all but that's the last job but i'm not going to bore you with that you already know what blanket stitches look like because if you've been following the series you'll have done a lot of this work yourself and blanket stitches are really really basic but if you don't know how to do blanket stitches there is a how to but i think it was one of the very first ones we ever did in the modifications so that's your lot we've run right out of time thanks for joining me get in the link in the description have a look through and i'll see you out there happy trails